treating patients of all ages. Their caring, professional team of dentists and their staff offer a full range of dental services, including restorative, preventative, pediatric, cosmetic, and so much more. Visit georgedentalassociates.com today. That's georgedentalassociates.com. And find out how they can enhance your smile through the art of dentistry. Wishing the Mustangs a successful season. Hello, everyone. This is John Marietta. With God, all things are possible. Who would have ever thought we would have come this far? I want to thank each and every one who has helped me get this far. We couldn't have done this without you all. Change is what you ask for, and that's what you're going to get. This was about you, not me. I'm just a regular guy trying to do the right thing. I am John Marietta. I am the hillbilly. With your help, you have made me the next recorder of deeds for the people of Fayette County. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America. Prime Rosak and Steve Superk back here at Laurel Highlands High School just about set to go. The Mustangs hosting the Norwin Knights. Laurel Highlands back in their home whites tonight. Blue numbers, red trim. Their bench off to our left. The Norwin Knights and their away navy blues with white numbers and a little bit of gold trim. Their bench off to our right. And Steve, we talked about the net off to the left affecting the play on Wednesday and actually raised it up a little bit tonight. Yeah, they did. They raised it up and... Uh you know, we uh, we talked to Coach Hogger about that. He, I don't think he was too pleased with that, uh, you know, Gallagher shot getting blocked the other night. Um, so they apparently, and that's all they had to do, really, is to just pull those pulleys up a couple of feet, and it doesn't look like it should affect, you know, it's not any higher than anything else now on the ceiling. So all good to go. And the WPIL is yet to announce, Steve, whether playoff games will be played at home sites like they were last year, back to the traditional neutral sites. I did talk with Don Rebel this week from the Triple I High School Sports Network, and he said it seems to be a little bit of a push going back towards the neutral site double headers for the early round games, but still no announcement as of yet. I personally like the higher seats hosting games, at least through the quarterfinals, kind of to reward teams that had great regular seasons, and I think it also adds to the playoff atmosphere. It does, but you get a big, uh, you know, if you get uh, a big matchup, I mean, you know, this is not the biggest jib around, so they, Correct. you know, they could find some bigger places where they can fit more people. So, you know, I mean, I know we got the end zone bleachers that are not out tonight, but uh, they don't need them tonight. But, uh, you know, if you got, uh, you know, a monster game with two, two, you know, big teams, you'd want to have as many people in the house as you can. And we're underway as Keandre to Shields wins it back to Rodney Gallagher. Your referees tonight, Dave Hoon, Scott Lavander, and Jake Miller as Keandre sends it back to Brandon Davis, near wing over to Rodney Gallagher, down low on the baseline to Chambers, back on the wing to Gallagher, and out the foul line, Keandre, little pivot back off to Rod here on the near side as John sets the screen. Gallagher off to his left to Keandre, back over near side, Chambers, good ball movement, Gallagher a touch, high pass, far side out of bounds off of Davis and out and over to the Norwin Knights. Can your starters for tonight to Shields, Gallagher, Davis, Chambers, Johns on the Laurel Highlands side, Belinsky, Edwards, Fleming, Weaver, and Stecco for the Norwin Knights and a little full court man-to-man -man pressure defense out of the Mustangs as Ryan Edwards brings it across. Touch from Belinsky, sent near side over to Ty Stecco and now back to Fleming, open look for three. Just nicked the front of the rim before going out of bounds and back over to Laurel Highlands. It might have caught the net, but uh, not much. If it caught yeah. the rim, it was just a little nick of the rim. Yeah. The fans were screaming air ball, and it might have been an air ball. Again, awfully close to that rim on the far side. So the Mustangs back on it in the Norwin zone. Keandre on the far wing sends it back to Brandon Davis high on the left. Cross court near side over to Joe Chambers. Back up top again to Davis. Davis free off a screen. Shovels it back again to Keandre. Keandre coming far wing long. Two on the way good for Keandre to Shields. The junior came in averaging 22.6 points a game and puts the Mustangs on top two to nothing here through about 75 seconds of basketball. Here's Adam Belinsky coming back for Norwin. Switching back here with Justin Weaver. Touch from Stecco back in the corner, and that three rattles in for Ryan Edwards. So the six-foot junior guard, Edwards, came in averaging 10 points and six assists per game as three puts the Knights on top, three to two. Mustangs looking to answer back. Keandre a three in and out. Hustle for the loose ball rebound. Tracked down there by Michael Fleming. Across to Ryan Edwards, and they're going to try a little alley-oop and missing there. Adam Belinsky on the backside. Mustangs running back, and that pass a little bit too far for Brandon Davis going out of bounds and back over to Norwin. Well, there you go. A couple of turnovers, and, uh, you know, you give the team life, and all of a sudden uh, they might get a little confidence. Of course, it's very early, but so far the Mustangs are going against a 2-3 zone, and they have not been able to penetrate. Uh, 
Nico Johns that needs to get in the middle there, and, and, and uh, but he doesn't pass the ball maybe as well as uh, as uh, Pratt does, and I really thought Sumter did a good job of passing that ball around through the middle, but Johns needs to get in that middle. There's a step on the line. On the far side by Ty yeah. Stenko, the 6'2 senior forward, came in averaging nine points and six rebounds a game. And not a lot of room over there, Steve, especially on that portion of the court. You have the Laurel Highland students yeah. all jamming that far boundary line and not a lot of operating room out there, especially for opposing teams that might not be used to this environment. Here's Brandon Davis back over to Gallagher near side. Double team comes over, sent baseline to Chambers back on the wing. Rod swung back up top again to Brandon Davis. Mustangs in a 3-2 hole here. Early on, 5.39 left here in the first as Gallagher works up top. Rod driving, floater up on the way in good Rodney Gallagher. 4-3 lead for the Mustangs. 2.30 in. And that's uh, penetrating the zone a little bit there. Finally got the ball in, but that's the first time they really got it inside that uh, perimeter of that zone. Adam Belinsky brings it across. His brother playing up at UPJ. He might be... Heading there in a couple of years as well. Only a junior. Kicks it back in the corner. Touch from Weaver. And back to Belinsky. Driving and scoring Adam Belinsky. 5-4. Yeah, Norwin on top. Uh, he's going to be a college player. That kid, you can tell. Here's Davis coming down the lane. And he's called for the charge. Good job by Weaver holding his position. Another bang-bang play. And the Knights a 5-4 lead here over Laurel Highlands. Three minutes in. And again, this is, uh, even though they're four and seven, it's 6A ball, so Mustangs stepping up in class tonight. And they look good against the other 6A teams they played this year. Baldwin, Peters Township, and Greensburg. Salem, Belinsky from just inside the foul line connects again. So four early points for Adam Belinsky, the 6'3 junior guard of the Knights. A 7-4 lead over the Mustangs. Here's Gallagher over to Brandon Davis trying to spin off of Ryan Edwards. Now resets here between the circles. A lot of standing around yes. and not really penetrating that zone. They're just throwing around the outside. They need to get somebody to get inside of it. Here's Gallagher along two up top off the mark. Battle for the rebound underneath. Tipped around and controlled there by Michael Fleming. Numbers coming back here for the Knights. And off on the far side, Stecco coming far baseline. Lost the handle but saved there from Belinsky. Jumper from the foul line off the front of the rim. No good. And Keandre the rebound there for the Mustangs. He'll send it off to Gallagher and across. Here's Gallagher coming right down the lane. A little contact, and he's fouled by Justin Weaver. And, Steve, a lot of times you come off of a big emotional win like the Mustangs had on Wednesday over Bell Vernon. Certainly the recipe for a possible letdown tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you still still got to play. I mean, every you're going to have those, you know, big games. But, uh, you know, they should be, uh, this should motivate him here getting, uh, down early Getting on. Down early, but uh, still a lot, long way to go. Kind of really this game hasn't. They haven't been able to score enough to get in their press. Let's Gallagher see. makes the first of two free throws. Let's see if they go to the press, if he can make this free throw. Second free throw, though, no good. And Norwin with the rebound, and they'll slow things back here with Michael Fleming. So it's Norwin 7, Laurel Highlands 5, midway through this opening quarter as Fleming brings it across. Touch off to Stecco as Johns extends defensively on the near side again to Michael Fleming. Fleming from the foul line, pulling it back to Adam Bolinski. Bolinski now back between their circles, sends it off to his right to Ryan Edwards. Kicked in the corner, Stecco for three, halfway down, rattled out. And Gallagher the rebound there for the Mustangs. Rod quickly across on the near side. He'll spot up for the three and connects. to give Laurel Highlands an 8-7 lead. Gallagher, six of the eight for Laurel Highlands. And the Mustangs lead by one. It seems like, Steve, when Laurel Highlands needs a little scoring, it gets Gallagher going, and he can certainly produce. We've seen a lot of that over the years. Well, he has the uh, a sense, the sixth sense, if you will, to, to know when, he, when his team needs something. Here's Fleming for three with Gallagher in his face off the back That's iron. No off. good. Nice offensive rebound. No foul called down low. Missing on the putback there was Stecco. And finally, Keandre out of yeah. the pack with it. Coach Hogger was calling for the foul. They tried the alley oop, went off the glass. No good. And back over to Norwin. And I don't know if yeah. Coach Hogger liked that alley oop. We have a full timeout right. on the court with 257 left here in the first. 8 7 Mustangs are back in 60 here in the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Bad hair day. Bad day at the office. Bad day behind the wheel. Hey, 
stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sproul's Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprawlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Going on now at Steve Harper Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $279 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. 4,500 cash trade equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Payment is for cash title fees and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends January 31st, 2022. Call supplies last. Residency restrictions apply. Call you for all of the details at 724-99-8000. 257 left here in the opening quarter. That last time out called by Norwin Knights with the basketball as Michael Fleming will trigger it into the backcourt to Ryan Edwards. Back to Fleming and across here on the near side. Chambers coming out. And very close to the near line was Justin Weaver. Now Pratt a little pressure as he just checked into the game there on Bolinski. And we have a travel call there on Bolinski and the Knights. And I think that uh, you, had, you said that uh, Coach Hogger was upset with that alley-oop try from Davis to Gallagher. He was busy yelling at Scott Lavander, thought there was a push-off as uh, they got an offensive rebound. And I don't know if he saw that pass or not. Here's Keandre on the far side. Mustangs an 8-7 lead over to Brandon Davis. Was fronted there by Edwards. Nice feed down low. Pratt comes free and lays it up and in. So Jaden Pratt makes his mark, Steve, right off the bench for a quick two. Yeah. Laura Highlands on top, 10-7. Well, he brings a presence down in the side of the block where he can catch and score. And he's a nice option. It's, it's really a nice option to have for Coach Hogger. Stecco got stripped. Gallagher running back. Almost lost the handle. Regains and pulls it back out here high on the right. Gallagher will take a three with Fleming in his face. It was an air ball, and Davis went for the save and couldn't kick it over to Joe Chambers in time as the ball goes out of bounds and back over to Norwin. Well, right away you could see, even though we've only uh, two minutes left still in the first quarter, long way to go, but the Knights are going to be a little bit better test than maybe some people thought. Extend a lot. Might not have the speed as Bell Vernon did as Davis almost a steal there for the Mustangs. But their style of game, Steve, certainly the style you see from a 6A opponent with a lot of size and wider bodies. Yeah. You could give Laurel Highland some trouble tonight. Here's Edwards picked up by Davis. More kids to choose from. And have a roster, a varsity roster of about 20, and Edwards in a little bit of trouble. The Mustangs whistled for a foul. And they got Keandre on it. Keandre, a couple of nice finishes on alley oops on Wednesday against Bell Vernon. Yeah. Some highlight reels for sure. Michael Fleming sending it in to Weaver, back to Fleming, trying to spin in here on Gallagher, sends it up a little short, but Keandre oh, wow. is going to be called for that's, a second personal that's foul. Tough. That could be, maybe, wow, I don't know about that. Dave Hoon made that call. He made that call from over in Hopwood. He just, uh... It'll be Michael Fleming at the foul line looking for his first point of the night. First of two free throws on the way and good. So Fleming into the scoring column. Three team fouls on the Mustangs, two on Shields, and one on Brandon Davis. Fleming, Norwin's leading scorer, averaging 17 points a game. Second of two free throws out the front of the rim, no good. Offensive rebound brought down by Justin Weaver, and he's called for the travel. There was some contact down low. Pratt went down. He's a little slow in getting up. And we thought there, Steve, if it wasn't a travel, Pratt might have been called for the foul, and he's in a little bit of pain working back into the play. Again, went down with that ankle about three weeks ago against McKee Sports. And back in the lineup, about his third game back, here's Brandon Davis Another underneath, push. handing off to Pratt. And Pratt not showing any effects of the ankle there, leaving it up and in. Boy, the officials, uh, Norwin getting the benefit so far. That's another push. Davis got pushed into the, underneath the basket on the, and luckily he was able to pass it off. Coming down low, two-handed slam from Adam Bolinski. So Belinsky adding to the highlight reel on the Norwin side 
with a slam, and it has the Knights back to within 2 of 12 to 10. Davis coming back. Quick three near side, in and out. Long rebound, track down Joe Chambers, and his pass intercepted. Look out here, Michael Fleming in transition, rejected by Gallagher. Pratt going for the save, and they're going to call a travel off the block here on Laurel Highlands. The Norwins basketball with 41.8 left here in the opening quarter. Mustangs up to a 12 to 10. Coach Hogger screaming at uh, Dave Hoon now. He's he's not happy with these uh, three officials so far. Fleming will send it into the backcourt there to actually between the circles to Stecco and good ball movement down low driving but missing there Justin Weaver and the Mustangs out of the pack with a Keandre right down Main Street floats it up and in Keandre to shield so Keandre with four the Mustangs lead extended to four at 14 to 10 with 23 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Coach May wanted a goaltending for hitting the backboard there that one might have affected the shot as the Mustangs banged the board and it uh, kind of rattled the whole uh, support there. Here's Justin Weaver rotating to the wing, sending it up top. A little fumble there from Ryan Edwards. They got a rule. The ball was touched there by Brandon Davis as Edwards regains. Kicks it back near wing. Fleming spots up for the three. Off the mark. Goes over the glass and out as time expires after one quarter of basketball. And Coach Hogger's hot but the Mustangs have a four-point lead at 14 to 10. We're back with a second and 60 seconds here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. When it's time to service your vehicle, don't procrastinate. Call Rose Motors at 724-583-1944. Rose Motors, specializing in computer diagnostics, engine and electrical problems, brake service, electronic tune-ups, air conditioning repair, exhaust work, state inspection, and more. Looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle? See Rose Motors, where financing is also available. Rose Motors, 42 River Avenue in Masontown. Serving the area for three generations. Open Monday through Friday, 830 to 5, Saturday by appointment. Since your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Good game so far. Laurel Highlands 14, Norwin 10. Knights keeping up tonight, Steve. Well, they sure are. They're, they're, uh, they've came to play, and they uh, don't seem to be intimidating, which is the thing that I noticed the most. I mean, they, they uh, Mustangs still have a lead and uh, haven't played particularly uh, great, but they're still up by four, and the, but the Knights have, uh, do not seem to be intimidated at all. Now send it into the backcourt here to Michael Fleming. Fleming, Norwin's leading score, just one point in that opening quarter, one made free throw. Pull it back over to Justin Weaver. Adam Belinsky leading the Knights with six. On the Laurel Highland side, Rodney Gallagher with six as the ball deflected out of bounds. Referees get together. Initially, the yeah. signal was Mustang basketball, and it will be Mustang Looked basketball. Like it went off Stecco's knee. And the Mustangs need to get one of those... Uh, Zoomies, what do they call yeah. them? The zoomies? The that's zoomies. what uh, Jason Taylor was telling yeah, us down that's there. That's what my daughter Carly said. It, uh, that's what they call them for their puppy dogs when they have those little energy fits. And uh, they need one of those now. Gallagher, yeah. nice little save there over to Davis up top. Back to Rod Nearside, fronted by Ryan Edwards. And back to Davis from the top of the key. Three in and outs. Keandre, the rebound, got fouled underneath. Scott Lavander making that call, and it goes on Adam Bolinski. His first team second. Mustangs with Keandre DeShields having two fouls. Brandon Davis with one. Bolinski and Weaver, a foul piece on the Norwin side. That last one on the floor, so Laurel Highlands will trigger it in. 7.23 left before halftime. Mustangs a 14-10 lead as Gallagher sends it in high on the left to Joe Chambers. Chambers hit a couple of threes on Wednesday against Bell Vernon. Gallagher at touch over to Davis again, top of the key. Back to Rod. High arcing three. Good again. Rodney Gallagher, second made three of the night. He has nine, and the Mustangs lead by seven at 17 to 10. 7.05 left before halftime. As Lance Meha barks out a play to his team. Adam Bolinski off to his left to Michael Fleming. I don't think Norwood's made a substitution yet tonight, Steve. Still with their starting five. Belinsky spinning in. Kick out. Stecco for three. Drains it. Ty Stecco, his first points of the game, come from outside the arc. 6-2 senior forward. Came in averaging nine points and six rebounds a game. Has the Knights back to within four. 17-13. 
Keandre now on the far side. Keandre driving, trying to hand off there to Chambers. Whistle and a push call underneath. That might be on Stecco. Waiting for a signal. It, it is. Does go on Stecco, his first team third. Now the Mustangs bring Nico Johns back into the game, replacing Keandre to Shields. Again, you have to watch the foul situation a little bit here on Keandre, picking up two personals in that opening quarter. Gallagher will trigger it in. No Sumter yet or, or uh, uh, Hooper. Hooper. Nope. Here's Brandon Davis on the far wing. Davis back in the corner again to Gallagher. Floats it back to Brandon here between the circles down low. They're trying to set up the alley-oop, and it got intercepted by Adam Belinsky. I'm sure the Knights saw that on film, Steve. They're a heady team, and they're going to launch a three from Justin Weaver up top that rattles out. They've had a couple of good looks from the outside, just not getting the bounces here tonight. Gallagher coming back, and he'll drain a long two. two. It's a two. Foot was on the line, so that'll give him 11, and a lead at six, and a quick deflection out of bounds will stay with Norwood. And you can sense that Gallagher knows that this team's in for a, a little bit better battle than usual. So he's uh, taking the opportunity. To, he's not being a little shy about shooting tonight. Here's Belinsky coming back. And you have Davis, who had 29 on Wednesday against Bell Vernon, and is yet to score tonight. And Keandre in foul trouble on the bench with only four points. And another three attempt from Stecco off the side of the rim. No good. Stecco might have got knocked down there by Chambers. No foul call. Just ruled out of bounds off of Laurel Highlands and outs. And Norwin again keeps possession here in the Mustang zone. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> a close line. A close line. That should have been a foul on Chambers, but no call. The Mustang's fortunate there. Michael Fleming will float it back in on the wing there to Adam Bolinski. A little pressure on the ball. Deflected out of bounds. Again ruled. Norwood's right. basketball. And this being a non-conference game, Steve, you don't have any kind of mandate on the officials. It's more of a local crew here tonight as Ty Hooper checks in on the Laurel Highland side. Dejai, a six-foot senior not guard, only his third more, game back. Not more of a local crew. It is, it is a, a local, local crew, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bolinski down low, open man Stecco. A little hesitation, but on the second pump, gets it to go. Ty Stecco with five Second quarter points, Knights back to within 4, 19 to 15. Here's Gallagher, cross court near side to Jai Hooper. Back up top again to Brandon Davis. And now to Jai again. And Davis, top of the key, those two playing catch. To Jai coming baseline near side, driving and getting fouled. To Jai, two points against Connellsville on Monday, did not score against Bell Vernon on Wednesday. Foul number 15, no, 14. 14. Justin Weaver's second personal foul. That'll get Luke Denny off the Norwin bench. 5'11 sophomore guard. Gallagher to work it in. Over to Jaden Pratt here on the near wing. And now back to Brandon Davis penetrating. Pulling it back to Rod. He's been hot from the outside so far. And that trend continues as he sends in another three. That's eight points here in the second. 14 for the game for Gallagher. The Mustang lead back to seven at 22 to 15. 4.50 left before halftime. And there's a three on the outside off the mark there, Ryan Edwards. Brandon Davis, the rebound for Laurel Highlands. Davis comes back, and he gets fouled underneath. Lance may have thought it was a clean block. Yeah, I think Luke Denny is going to pick up the foul. Yeah, not a lot of contact there, though, to be honest. That the, it just looked awkward, and I and, uh, thought they were going to call maybe a travel on uh, Davis, but uh, he gets to go to the line. Davis, first of two free throws on the way in. Good, that's his first point of the game. Came in, Steve, 50 of 61 from the free throw line, 82%. Mustangs is a team, 74%, 143 of 193 coming in. And Davis drains both free throws here. And the Mustang lead at 9 at 24 to 15. 436 left before halftime. Knight sent it forward to Ryan Edwards. Watch there by Hooper. Edwards trying to come free. Little head fake, and he's called for a carry. Jake Miller on that call on the far side. And Rodney Gallagher will send it back in. And the Mustangs will be back at home on Monday. Makeup game against West Mifflin. They'll travel to Uniontown on Wednesday. And then travel to Thomas Jefferson next Friday. TJ's really struggled this year, Steve. Albert Gallatin in second place in Section 1. Their only conference loss came against Laurel Highlands. Gallagher missed there on the jumper. 
Denny, the rebound underneath. Out and across to Michael Fleming. Fleming far winging in, had the ball poked out of bounds. No, they're just going to say he lost it, Steve. Lee Mustang basketball. Yeah, he was uh, trying to gather himself, going a little too fast, and I think he, as he was cradling the ball, it hit his kneecap and uh, popped it out of bounds. And Hooper brings it back across here for Laurel Highlands. Over to Gallagher. Back to, to Jai up top. Now to Jai penetrating. Pulling it off. Far side. Brandon Davis comes far. Baseline long. Two on the way. Good for Brandon Davis. His first field goal of the game. He has four. The Mustangs, their first double-digit lead of the night at 11, leading 26-15. 3.41 left before halftime. Edwards in the corner to Stecco. Rotates back up to the wing. Another touch from Edwards. Far side Fleming. And now on it there, 22, Luke Denny. Pulling it back to Belinsky, his three ball off the side of the rim, no good. Brandon Davis, the rebound there Travel. for the Mustangs. Called for the walk. Yeah, that's, uh, you don't see that called very often. He caught the ball, gathered himself as he was starting his dribble. He might have took a little extra step, but uh, usually when it's not involved and that far away from the hoop, they kind of let it go. But Scott Lavander felt the need to call it. Yeah, not that time. Yeah. 3.26 left here in the second quarter, and it will be Michael Fleming to trigger it in here for Norwin. And Davis watching Fleming. He'll send it into the backcourt to Ryan Edwards. Edwards picked up by Tajai Hooper. Near side That's again, Bolinski, and a little contact. That, I think they get the foul on yeah, Pratt. They're going to get the foul, foul on Pratt, but that could have been a travel. But it uh, goes as a foul against Jaden Pratt. His first team fourth. Lead still at 11. Brian Morozak along with Steve Super. Kylie Silberdash behind the camera on our Facebook Live feed tonight. Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital studio. Stecco gets it off the inbounds pass. Sends it off to Denny on the far side. Back to Ryan Edwards near wing. Drains the three. Edwards sending it in. His second May three of the game. Hit one in the opening quarter. So he has six. Knights back to within eight. Down 26 to 18. 3 4 left before halftime. Gallagher back to Hooper between the circles. A little ball fake back to Rod. NBA range. Three in again. He's feeling it tonight, Steve. He's at four threes. Has 11 here in the second quarter. 17 for the game. And the lead right back up to 11 as Rod answers wow. the three from Edwards. See, that's what I don't understand. He's <laughs> officiating something. And I know Scotty, he's a good guy. But, I, you know, all, these, all, these, all this contact you've seen out there. And then they call that foul on Hooper. And it, he barely, he barely touched the guy. On the floor, so the Knights keep possession. Yeah. 15 foul against Laurel Highlands. Edwards has it again on the far side. Tighter defense there from Hooper. Sent near side Stecco. A little ball fake on Pratt now. Drives and a little mini hook shot won't drop there for Stecco. The Mustangs out of the pack with it as Pratt touches it ahead to Gallagher. Sent far wing Davis. A little ball fake back far baseline to Hooper up top again. Gallagher looking for another three. That one halfway down rattled out. Two Knights collided on the rebound but got deflected off to Norwin's Michael Fleming who brings it across. Tried a little low bounce pass right at the feet of Adam Belinsky. Couldn't handle it. Goes out of bounds and back over to Laurel Highlands. Rattled off the back of his leg. That was a tough pass for him to corral in. And the Mustangs will send it back in as Jaden Pratt works it into Rodney Gallagher. A little touch back to Shai Hooper. Far wing now, Rodney again. Watched there by Michael Fleming. Resets up top. Little ball fix and far side Jaden Pratt. Pratt guarded there by Luke Denny. Cross court near side. Brought down Brandon Davis. Comes near baseline. Now that, Got pretty deep. Now is that a foul? Looks like it on Adam Bolinski. If that's, Likely suspect. If, if that's not a foul, then they should never call a foul, right? So, John Bolinski yeah. is second. Team six. Joey Chambers backing on the Mustang side. They might let Keandre Steve sit for the Final 147 of the yeah, second well, quarter, yeah. leading by 11. And you have Joe in for Tajai Hooper. As Gallagher sends it in high on the right now to Brandon Davis. Brandon resets up top, pulls it back high on the left, Chambers. Gallagher a touch. Back to Brandon again, and Brandon a little penetration, floats it up. Shot didn't drop, but a blocking foul called here on the ninth, likely going on Luke Denny. That'll be Denny's second. In the act, 
Seventh team foul on the Knights, and two free throws upcoming for Brandon Davis. Davis, four second quarter points, two of two from the free throw line, make it three of three. As he drains his first of two, lead at 12, the largest lead the Mustangs have had tonight at 30 to 18. Davis is second of two on the way and good again. He's been pure, Steve. He was 11 of, or check that, 15 of 16 at the foul line against Bell Vernon the other night. Here's Belinsky up top, spinning in there on Pratt. A little hesitation of Belinsky getting it to go around Jaden Pratt. So that's eight for Adam Belinsky. And the Knights back to within 11 at 31 to 20. 1.15 left before halftime. The big guy Pratt looking for a three up top. No good foul caught off the rebound going here on the Mustangs. That'll be over the back there, Steve on Sumter. Yep. His first, team sixth. The Knights will trigger it in, 112 left before halftime. So a 31 to 20 lead for Laurel Highlands over Norwin. Yock leading Uniontown at halftime, 33 to 27. That's a surprise. Mustang struggling up at, or check that, the Red Raiders struggling up at Cougar Mountain tonight. And as Stecco had the basketball there, another Pratt. foul called here on the Mustangs. It's two on Pratt. That'll be a one and one here for Adam Bolinski. The Knights down 11. Bolinski averages 16 points a game. Makes the front end of a one and one here to give him nine tonight. Knights back to within 10, down 31 to 21. They're down 10, but it just doesn't feel like they're out of this game, does it? I agree. Second of two from Bolinski, rattling out. Nico Johns, the rebound there for Laurel Highlands. Off to Brandon Davis. 55 seconds left before halftime. Touch from Chambers and back to Davis again, and I think the Mustangs are going to make the Knights come out here and come and get them with 45 seconds left before halftime. Marl Highlands is going to hold the basketball. Well, when you got two two guys, Pratt and get, and uh, the Shields with two fouls each, if you're uh, Coach Hogger, you're happy to get to the locker room without any of these either one of those guys getting their third foul. Maybe on the Norwin side, you don't mind being down ten going to the locker room either. Yeah. Lance Meha with Apparent, no pressure defensively. Apparently not. <laughs> they're not. They're not coming out to challenge. So you. You're going to have about a minute taken off the clock here on this final possession of the second quarter. Nico Johns now a touch. Mustang show a little movement. Back to Joe Chambers. And now Gallagher with five seconds left in the quarter. Scenes, the screen set up there from Sumter. Gallagher drives. That might be a goaltend. It is. And Lance Meha's furious. He is hot at Scott Lavander. Wow. Well, he should be. Because not to say it wasn't, but we did it a couple times on the other end, hit the backboard, and they didn't call it. So, you know, he's, he, and he was asking for it at the time, and then, of course, they call it going the other way. So I could see why he's upset. He's still giving it to the officials. Scott made the call, but he's in Jake Miller's face in the corner. So Norwin sends it in. Edwards from three-quarter court. I'm going to send that one in. Yeah. We saw Pratt drain one at the end of the third against Connellsville, and Edwards almost put that one in. So we've reached halftime, 33-21 Mustangs. Stay tuned. We'll recap the first half numbers for you in a moment here on WMBS, the Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. For attorney Melinda Della Rose, helping people with compassion and counseling, candid legal advice, strong advocacy, and professional commitment is what she does best. With an office at 99 East Main Street in downtown Uniontown, attorney Della Rose specializes in family law, municipal law, and general civil litigation, as well as personal injury, estate planning, probate, and more. For more information, call attorney Melinda Della Rose, 724-437-3200, 724-437-3200. Or online at DellaRoseLaw.com. Chris Parker Jr., it's a new year, so what's new for 2022 at Auto Land Hyundai? 2022 will bring a tax refund for many people. So if you're expecting a tax refund, stop in at Auto Land and ask us about our deferred down payment program. That makes buying a new Hyundai easier. Any other special offers? The entire Hyundai lineup has great offers, such as the 2022 Venue Hatchback with 0.9% APR up to 60 months. 
or get $750 off with HMF bonus cash. And when the snow arrives, don't get stuck without all-wheel drive. Be prepared. Stop in at Autoland and check out our all-wheel drive Hyundai Konas, Tucsons, and Santa Fe's. And of course, every new Hyundai comes with America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain protection, and three-year complimentary maintenance. Autoland Hyundai, downtown Uniontown. See them online at autolandhyundai.com. Our phone 724-437-9999. That's 724-437-9999 for Autoland Hyundai. Remember, you always pay less to drive the best at Autoland Hyundai. Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, located at 624 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mama Ruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Sampson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mama Ruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor-outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit MamaRukaPizza.com for their menu. Are you looking to list or sell your house? Now is the time to let the professionals at Caldwell Banker Laurel Ridge Realty help you with all of your real estate needs. Caldwell Banker Laurel Ridge Realty has two convenient locations to better serve you. In Uniontown area, 724-437-7100. Or in Connellsville area, 724-628-7200. And speak with one of our real estate professionals. Visit our website, caldwellbanker.com. We've been proudly serving Western Pennsylvania area for over 30 years and look forward to helping you with all of your real estate needs. Broker, Paul Borch, Jr. Looking for a fast, friendly notary service? Sandy Howell Notary Services, LLC, 158 Dry Knob Road, Smithfield, PA, is here to help with transfers, plate renewals, new PA plates, and more. They serve Uniontown, Smithfield, Fairchance, and surrounding areas. Open weekday evenings starting at 5.30 p.m., Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sandy Howell Notary Services, 158 Dry Knob Road, Smithfield, 724-564-8955. Big enough to serve you, small enough to know you by name. With branches in Markleysburg, Connellsville, Hopwood, Uniontown, and Periopolis, Somerset Trust Company is truly Fayette County's community bank. We invite you to stop by and experience the Somerset Trust Company difference. Local decision making, convenient locations, extended hours, award-winning online and mobile banking, and more. Somerset Trust Company, community banking worth talking about. Branches and ATMs throughout Fayette County. Hi, I'm Russ Playho. As your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life is something I take, well, personally. I'm committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. From bundling your auto, home and life insurance with ease, to evaluating optional coverage based on your protection needs. I can build an insurance proposal that fits your life. Are you in good hands? Contact me, Russ Playho, for a free quote. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, savings vary. Halftime here at Laurel Highlands High School. The Mustangs a 33-21 lead over the Norwin Knights. Steve is your halftime stats. They're brought to you by Peachin's Pharmacy in the downtown Connellsville Peachin Market. The Knights, oh, there we go. Uh, for the Knights, Zblinski finishes with nine points. Edward, Edwards with six. Fleming with one. And Stecco with five. They scored 10 in the first, 11 in the second, 21 at the half. For the Mustangs, the Shields just four points uh, in the first half, all in the first quarter. Gallagher on fire, though, with 19. Davis with six, all in the second quarter. And Pratt with uh, four points, all in the first. They scored 14 in the first, 19 in the second for a 33-21 to halftime lead. And, of course, Keandre, Steve, didn't see the court much in the second quarter after getting in foul trouble early on. No, he didn't. And he, uh, you know, he just... Uh, it's just uh, you know a couple of cheap fouls, and uh, you know that'll put you on the bench, especially in a, a game with uh, could be close in the second half. So Coach Hogger had to had to kind of sit him, and he had to sit Pratt as well, who picked up his second foul midway through that second quarter. But they were able to get out of there with a 12-point halftime lead. And a busy week for us next week. We'll have the Laurel Highlands game for you on Monday as they host West Mifflin at 7:30. Tuesday at South Moreland at Uniontown, 7:30 start. Wednesday, Laurel Highlands at Uniontown, 7.30 start. Thursday, Brownsville at Uniontown, 7.30 start. Friday, Laurel Highlands at Thomas Jefferson, another 7.30 start. And Saturday, Uniontown plays in the Pittsburgh Basketball Classic at Montour. That game will tip at 6 o'clock. That's right, six games in six days here on WMBS, all streamed live on the WMBS Facebook page. Tonight, it's the Mustangs up over the Norwin Knights, 33-21 here at the break. Second half action comes your way next here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. 
Police Plumbing and Excavating, helping area residents with residential and commercial plumbing, gas, electric, and water lines, along with paving concrete and excavation site work for over 30 years. Building a new home, Lees does utility installation of water, gas, and sewage lines. Lees does maintenance work on all existing homes, too. Call 724-245-2950. That's 724-245-2950 for your quote. Lee's wishes all the area basketball teams good luck this season from Lee's Plumbing and Excavating. I'm attorney Bill Martin, partner at Radcliffe Law. When you're in an accident, it can be frightening. You have to deal with insurance companies, medical bills, doctors, and employers, all while trying to recover from your injuries. We want you to concentrate on getting well and allow us to handle the rest. We have 40 years of experience at handling all sorts of personal injury cases here at Radcliffe Law. Call our office today at 724-439-3939 to set up your free consultation. We have Saturday appointments available. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. I'm worried about this winter weather. How are we going to get to the grocery store for the next few months? I'm not too comfortable driving in the snow anymore, and with your disability, you definitely can't drive. You know, the last time I went to the doctor's office, they're talking about fact. Fact? Yeah, Fayette Area Coordinated Transportation. Fact will come to the house and pick us up. They have fixed routes to places like Pittsburgh and Uniontown, even Nemico and Woodlands. Fact also has a shared ride program that schedules you to go to places like the doctor's office or the grocery store. Well, you know, the grandkids will be at our house when school's canceled. Fact lets anyone ride the fixed route bus, and children under 12, accompanied by an adult, ride for free, as do us seniors age 65 and up. Wow, Fact might be the right answer for us this winter. Do you have their number? Yes, it's 724-628-RIDE or factbus.com. It's a fact for Fayette County Public Transit. Going on now at Sea Harbor Gabby E. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $279 a month. Security deposit waves. Stop in for a test drive or visit Sea Harbor Chevy E. Dot com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is through GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. For 4,500 cash rate equity, with loyalty or new conquest. Payment is for tax, settle fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends January 31st, 2022. Well supplies last. Residency restrictions apply. Call dealer for all other details at 724 Looking for a dentist? Dr. Michael George and Dr. Ashley Parker of George Dental Associates, a union town staple, has over 40 years' experience treating patients of all ages. Their caring, professional team of dentists and their staff offer a full range of dental services, including restorative, preventative, pediatric, cosmetic, and so much more. Visit georgedentalassociates.com today. That's georgedentalassociates.com. And find out how they can enhance your smile through the art of dentistry. Wishing the Mustangs a successful season. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potter's on Facebook. We'll see you at Potter's. Looking for the highest quality products at the lowest prices? Shop and save on Walnut Hill in Uniontown is the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Save big and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and save. Walnut Hill Road, Uniontown, open 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Working hard to offer you the best at Shop and Save because it's the just right thing to do. Mustangs with the basketball as the third quarter gets underway. Laurel Highlands working right to left as we describe it. Rodney Gallagher back up top. Joe Chambers bounce pass on the wing to Keandre. In the corner, Rod back to Keandre again on the wing. Again, Keandre out there with two personals. Looking to penetrate. Floats one up a little short. Battle for the rebound. And Stecco almost took it away from teammate Justin Weaver. And notice Pratt got the start for the second half. 
He was very effective in that second quarter. Bolinski long three out the front of the rim. No good. Rebound tipped around and controlled by Joe Chambers. Off to Gallagher and across between defenders. Rod has it stripped, and it's Adam Bolinski coming back for the Knights. Kicks it out. Ryan Edwards it was a long two. Came up short. Keandre the rebound. Off to Rodney Gallagher. Gallagher racing back over to Joe Chambers. Three on the way, in and out. Long rebound. Found there by Keandre. Fights back inside and lays it up and in Keandre to Shields. His first two points since the opening quarter. Now has six for the game. Mustang lead up to 14 at 35 to 21. As we go under seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Brian Edwards trying to work off of Brandon Davis. Sends it back between the circles to Michael Fleming. Fleming's been quiet. Steve, their leading score only one point so far. Now Edwards drives inside and he's fouled. Well, I don't know. That was uh, He was losing the ball going up and I don't know where the foul was. That's a tough call there, but these officials. <laughs> they have been getting a lot of flack. I was yeah. looking at halftime on our Facebook live stream, yeah, and they haven't had a, a good couple night. of uh, folks watching weren't very happy with the officials. They've been getting booed here on at the gym tonight as well. It's been a tough evening for them. And Ryan Edwards makes his first of and two free throws. Both to give him ways. Seven. I mean, no, I agree. I, I mean, it's not like they're calling them all for one side or the other. It's just a lot of curious calls. Let's just say that. Now Edwards for a second of two free throws. Of course, they're human. Everybody makes mistakes out there. And Edwards' second free throw yep. on the way and good as it spins Tough. in 35-23. Everybody thinks it's easy to be an official but until you got to go out there on a whistle in front of all these people and make the call. Correct. So, tough job and yeah. tough to pick up all the angles as well. I think sometimes we have a better angle up here the officials have on the court. And there's Gallagher taking a three from the near wing off the mark there in traffic. The rebound pulled down by Michael Fleming of Norwood. Off to Ryan Edwards and across. Picked up by Keandre. Edwards stays with it. Works off to his left. Floats it back on the far wing to Bolinsky. Who switches back with Fleming. He launches a three. It rattles out. Stecco had the rebound and lost it out of bounds over to Laurel Highlands. And you look at Fleming tonight, Steve. He's come close on a lot of his shots. Some of them have been halfway down, but Norwin has not gotten a lot of those shots to drop here tonight. No. They've uh, had a tough night shooting. They've made a couple threes. Uh, Edwards has made a couple, and uh, Stecco made one, but they haven't made, uh, that's the only three that they have. Here's Brandon Davis up top for the Mustangs. Now from the near elbow, launches a two that's off the mark, and Adam Bolinski the rebound. He'll come forward to Fleming. Foot was on the line, long two, it's an air ball, goes right to Gallagher. Mustangs break back, outlet pass forward to Davis, almost too far, somehow stayed in bounds, over to Pratt, reset to Chambers, open look for three, top of the key, off the mark. And on the back side, after a little deflection, Michael Fleming corrals the rebound there for Norwin. Go cross court near side. Bolinski back to Fleming. Timeout. And a timeout. Norwin will take one as well. 5.30 left here in the third. 35-23 Mustangs. We're back in 60 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases. But most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including pre-consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbor yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back here at Laurel Highland High School, Norman with the basketball working left to right as we describe it. Quick three, far side, no good. Michael Fleming, offensive rebound down low, fouled on the putback. Justin Weaver, and he'll have two free throws upcoming. Weaver's yet to score in this game, Steve. First Six foot on, junior guard. First foul on Chambers. And so far you have Bolinski with nine, Edwards with eight, leading the way for the Knights in the scoring department. Now Justin Weaver gets into the scoring column, making his first of two free throws. All the points for this uh, quarter so far from Norman from the free throw line. Weaver second of two on the way in good. And the Mustangs fortunate there. They called that on Chambers. That was just his first, but the Shields was hovering around the area. 
35-25. The Laurel Highlands lead at 10. 5.06 left in the third. Davis penetrating near wing and in and draws the foul. Either going to be on Bolinski or Stecco. Goes on Bolinski. That will be his third. Yeah. That's a big foul because Bolinski does a lot with the basketball out there for the Knights. Averages 16 points, 9 rebounds a game. And rule this 9 shooting. And Gallagher will send it in to Brandon Davis. Back on the near wing to Keandre. Long three. Good. Keandre to Shields. And look out, Steve. If he starts to heat up, he is 9 now after that three. And the Mustang lead up to 13 at 38 to 25. Coach May arguing with the officials before they threw that ball in. He thought the foul should have been on Stecco. Here's Fleming with the top of the key. Pulls back Ryan Edwards. Sent far side over to Justin Weaver. Now Edwards again up top. Edwards will take a three from the top of the key. It's out the front of the rim. No good offensive rebound. Weaver scores on the putback. So Weaver, four quick points for the Knights. They're back to within 11, down 38-27. 4.26 left here in the third. Gallagher over to Keandre to Shields in front of the Mustang bench. Pratt sets the screen. Keandre works to his left. Long two on the way. Good again. Keandre to Shields. That's five quick points for Keandre. He now has seven here in the third. 11 for the game. Lead back up to 13. Belinsky coming back. Quick two for the Knights. And Belinsky with 11. This game all of a sudden, the pace picking up a little bit. I think that favors Laurel Highlands. Lead at 11. Davis down low. Chambers comes free and lays it up and in. I First thought, two of the game for Joey Chambers. I thought Joey waited a little too long there, and he was almost got a shuffle the feet traveling call, but he was able to gather himself and put it up. He was expecting some heavy contact that never came. And Weaver had good defense there for Norwin. And Weaver sends it back over to Ty Stecco up top. Little ball fig now back to his right again. Bolinski, good defense from Pratt. Bolinski comes inside, a little kick out. Weaver a touch back to Stecco. Stecco left of the lane, lower the shoulder coming in. Yeah, that but he drew the foul. On Chambers. Let's see who they call it on. Oh, wow. Keandre, see, wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> he, was, he was just running along with him, and Coach Hogger just kind of shaking his head. Wow. And that was a that was a, looked like Chambers got the reach in there to really stop the ball. These calls are something yeah, tonight, they, Steve. They, what, they have been <laughs> very curious. We don't complain too much, but it's just been some odd calls tonight. Stecco makes his first of two. Going to keep Keandre out there with three fouls right and now. I think we do a pretty good job of saying when it goes in our favor. I agree. You know, and it doesn't. We don't try to be homers. Stecco second free throw on the way in good. And I'm not saying that wasn't a foul, but I don't think Oh, it was I agree on, it's it a was, foul, but yeah, I would have posted yeah. on Chambers, not yeah. on Keandre, because I think sure. Chambers had the initial contact. Here's Keandre. As like the other one could have went on Stecco, and they threw it on uh, Belitsky. Correct. So Keandre with three personals, has the basketball in front of the Mustang student section, now penetrates, leans in, put it off the glass, no good. And the rebound there went to Justin Weaver. And you wonder, if you're Keandre, how much you change your game out there right now with three personals. Weaver trying to pull it back out. Pratt a deflection, went right back over to Michael Fleming, who found it right place, right time, and floated it up and in, in the lane. First field goal for Fleming. He has three nights back to within nine, single-digit game at 42-33. Gallagher on the near side. John sets the screen. He'll take a long fadeaway two off the front of the rim. No good. And here come the Knights coming back. Stecco forward. Edwards three on the way. Good. Mustangs need a timeout. Edwards with 11. And Coach Hogger's going to take it. Knights back to within six. Laurel Highlands 42. Norwin 36. 232 left here in the third. We're back at 60. You're on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Year-end clearance time at Thurby's Riverside Ford. This is the time and this is the place. With Truck Month Incentives, get 0% Ford credit financing for 60 months on new 2021 Ford F-150s in stock. Ford F-150, the toughest truck for the toughest jobs and the best-selling truck on the planet for 45 years. During our year-end clearance, take advantage of 0% Ford credit financing incentives on all new 2021 Ford Ranger, Explorer, and Edge. Come and experience your presidential award-winning dealer, Thurby's Riverside Ford, located one mile past Lady Luck Casino. Approved Ford Motor Credit financing required. Offer ends January 30th, 2022. Stop in and see Sammy, Ashley, Jimmy, or Joey. 
Mustangs with the basketball as we come back. Their lead is down to six at 42 to 36. 220 left here in the third. Gallagher and a Pratt from the corner. Long two, no good. Deflected out of bounds. Will stay with Laurel Highlands here in the Norwin zone. Wow. Looked like Nico Johns tipped that ball out to me. I don't understand it. But it's, the Mustangs will take it. And sent in to Brandon Davis up top. Pivots off to Keandre. He had number 10, Trent Rash, yeah, top foul. Nick into the game. And there's a quick steal and a scoop and score and one coming back. No. Ryan Edwards. They're just going to call it uh, goaltending, but then they ball went in. Who's that, Edwards that made that? Correct. I believe they're just going to call it goaltending. No, they're giving him the end one, Steve. Maybe not now. Yeah, he, he called a goaltending. He didn't call a foul. He's saying he made it, though. He yeah, no, no. He's just calling a goaltending. He called a goaltending. Yeah, because he's... Nonetheless, the make pulls the Knights back to within four now at 42 to 38. And I think what confused everybody is he made the shot. Usually you see the goaltending yeah, called, yeah, the you know, shot doesn't go in. Correct. Why would you blow the whistle and call goaltending? When he yeah. made the shot. Right. And here's Brandon Davis in traffic, puts up a shot. It doesn't drop. Battle for the rebound. Johns finds it. Try to send it off to his left. Now a scrum for it. Jump ball called. We go to the arrow, and it favors Norwood. So a great surge here in the third quarter for the Norwin Knights. They're back to within four of Laurel Highlands at 42 to 38. Sloppy, sloppy game right now for, and it's probably what the Norwin's looking for. And they're going to call. What are they going to do here? Looks like someone's getting ready to shoot a free throw. And a little moisture on the yeah. court, just wiping it up. And it will be the Knights basketball. Michael Fleming will send it in. Too early, Steve, to trigger the upset alerts. Mustangs only up well, four, I mean, one third, 152 left here in the third. It's a 6-8 team. You don't know how much of an upset you're talking, but uh, they are 4-7 and seven coming in, right? So. Mustangs 12-0, number one team in 5A, but the Knights taking the Mustangs deep into this third quarter, down only four now after a nice surge. And the Mustangs have foul trouble. It's sent back. Michael Fleming for three, pulls the Knights back to within one, connecting from the far wing. Fleming with six, 42, 41 Mustangs. 129 left here in the third. Here's Keandre, baseline Pratt. He gets pinned up and fouled. Well, that one probably could have been a walk on Pratt before he got fouled, but uh, they're going to call a foul on, on uh, Weaver. That's his third. That's a break for the Mustangs. And on the floor, Coach, and Gallagher sends it into Keandre high on the left. Coach May wasn't happy with that call. Keandre top of the key, working left of the lane. Down to Pratt, little fumble regains, puts it up and in, Jaden Pratt. Pratt with six, Mustangs back up three at 44 to 41. 110 left here in the third. Here's Michael Fleming. Go cross court far side and across to Ryan Edwards. Little touch off there to Stecco. Back to Edwards, good ball moving around. Back to Bolinski coming baseline, near side, tough shot. Got it to go with the left hand. Adam Bolinski with 13. Knights back to within one again at 44 to 43. 48 seconds left here in the third. Davis baseline, Pratt long two from the corner, no good. Bolinski the rebound on the back side, and Norwin an opportunity to take the lead on this possession. Over to Edwards, thought about the long three. Laurel Highlands led Steve. And seem to control this game going into the locker room, but it's been a different game for the Knights here in the second half. Here's Justin Weaver between the circles. They might take this one all the way down. Under 20 seconds left here in the third. Weaver working off to his dribble. left. Not called. Sent it off to Stecco off the high pass. Brought it down. Switches back with Ryan Edwards. Edwards little ball fake from the foul line. Touch from Stecco back to Belinsky near elbow. Jumper off the mark. Three seconds left in the quarter. Knights are out of bounds on the far side. They're going to roll Weaver out with .9 left on the clock. And they might put a little more time on it. Oh. They should, but they're not going to. Yep, they're going to put 2.6 back on the clock. Yeah. Give Laurel Highlands a little opportunity here to make something happen. Into Keandre, shot from midcourt off the mark. So we'll go to the 
Fourth quarter, the Laurel Highlands lead only one. Mustangs 44, Knights 43. We're back in 60 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. When your car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair. Currently in their 59th year of providing quality, reliable service to the community, Ted Silva and Son offers complete collision service, minor to major repairs, frame and unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly blueprint your vehicle for repair, and they will work with your insurance company. With a paint booth that utilizes the environmentally friendly waterborne paint process, Ted Silva and Son not only cares for our community and our children, they care for our environment. Located on Atlas Road in Hopwood, it is the goal of Ted Silva and Son to alleviate the stress of an accident and assist you in any way possible. Family owned and operated for 59 years, call 724-437-2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, LLC. Proud to sponsor local high school sports. Back now for the fourth quarter, Laurel Highlands 44, Norwin 43. Steve, the Mustangs were outscored 22 to 11 in that third quarter after leading 33 to 21 at halftime. Yeah, they just uh, some bad shooting and bad shot selection, and, and uh, Norwin uh, played uh, pretty good. Uh, Belinsky got hot there, and so did Edwards, and. Uh, all of a sudden, it's a one-point game, and, you know, I think uh, it's time now for the big three to take over, and I think, you know, a lot of shots from Pratt in the corner. I don't know if they're, that's the shots that Coach Hogger's looking for. You know, when you got three guys out there like Gallagher and uh, Davis and, and the Shields, why you're going to take that shot in the corner, you know, I think they're gonna, you're going to see the ball in these guys' hands a little bit uh, more often here right away. To Jai Hooper on the floor to start the fourth quarter. Well, Over to Jaden Pratt. Pratt who drains the long two from the near wing. Shows you what I know, Pat. <laughs> Pratt. Pratt now with eight after that make. And the Mustangs back up three at 46 to 43. Also after three, Uniontown a 43-39 lead over Yacht tonight at Cougar Mountain. So the Red Raiders back in the lead there as well. Down low, Ty Stecco pulling it out to Ryan Edwards. Edwards now at the foul line, pulls it back over to Fleming. Little shovel there on the switch to Justin Weaver. And now Belinsky was double teamed, got out of it. Back over to Fleming who penetrates. Little operating room and Fleming shot drops down this time for the Norwin Knights. So Michael Fleming now with eight and the Knights back to within one down 46 to 45. 7-12 left in regulation. Gallagher back to Pratt. Jumper foul and extended on the left. No good. Offensive rebound. Keandre. A little fadeaway right in the lane. Good for Keandre to Shields. Keandre though, now with 13. Even though he missed that shot and he made the last one, Pratt, though, that's a good spot for him, though, like straight on. He's a little better from there than those corners. And Steve Gallagher had 19 points at halftime. He's yet to score here in the second half. Bolinski, nice baseline drive. Couldn't finish. Got it back. Whistle on the play. What do we got? Push yeah. caught here on the Mustangs. That's going to be probably on Davis. Yep. Does go on Brandon Davis. That's his third. Man, Correct. Some foul trouble, but you. Keandre with three. Davis with three. Knights descend it in. They need to hurry, and it's. Sent in to Michael Fleming, and Mustangs pressure the ball. Keandre forces it off to Brandon Davis. Back to Keandre. Defense came back. Keandre's shot came up short. Ball deflected out of bounds. I thought it went off of Stecco and out. Yeah, yeah it definitely went off of Stecco. And Scott Lavander saying right Norwin basketball. What is he looking at? And I, I don't understand it. It's right in front of him. Stecco clearly tipped it away from the Shields. I mean, that's just... Uh, and I'm surprised Dave Hoon and Jake Miller didn't come over and have a little consultation there. Right. Somebody gotta... else had to have saw that. The Knights get it back down three. Here's Belinsky again up top. They try to set the screen. Keandre came out. Ball now loose. Scrum for it, and Keandre will pick it up. Uh, Coach, Keandre Coach, at center. Coach May has got to be going nuts because that had to be a foul on the Shields. Over to Brandon Davis, and he's called for the foul on the shot in the lane, and he'll get two free throws up coming. They're just missing a lot out there, Steve, the on Shields both sides. Shields mauled. I mean, him and Davis just killed, killed Stecco there, and no call. And <laughs> Coach May's over there shaking his head. I can't blame him. And that foul goes on Steck, or is that Stecco. Stecco, yep, his yeah, second. Two free throws here for Brandon Davis. First of two up on the way and no good. Rare miss of the line for Brandon Davis. And came in 82%. Only had six second quarter points today after he scored 29 against Belvernon on Wednesday. 
Lead remains a three. One possession game, 6.09 left in regulation. Second of two free throws rattling out again for Brandon Davis. Rare to see him miss a free throw, let alone two straights. And now Michael Fleming coming back here for the Knights. Guarded by Pratt. Fleming looks for positioning in the room. Out of bounds in front of the Norwood bench. A good defense by Pratt that time. Not fouling, just playing, holding his, holding his ground. Here's Davis back across over to Gallagher. Almost a steal there from Fleming. Mustangs keep it alive. Rod drives and draws the foul. Might be the third on Stecco. It should be if they, of course, we've. We're going to wait till they get posted tonight. It is the third on Stecco. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I mean, you know, we don't criticize them this much, but they, they're having a rough night. They are. And Gallagher looking for his 20th point of the night. Misses a free throw. Laurel Highlands has missed three straight of the line here in the fourth quarter. And this is from a team that came in 74% for the season from the free throw line, oh, especially have. these studs like Gallagher and Davis. Gallagher 77%, Ga Davis 82%. Haven't but Gallagher had, does make the second. Haven't had any games this close in the fourth quarter yet. You're either. right on that. 49-45 now, Laurel Highlands. 540 left in regulation. This is I agree. good for them. This is, even if they lose, this is good for them to get to test it a little bit. Fleming bouncing it back to Ryan Edwards. Back over to Fleming. Fleming staying with it. They say he got tripped up. That's the call, or did he fall over his own two feet? It looks like he just kind of tripped, and there might have been a little bit of a bump, but not much. Posted on Jaden Pratt, if his he, third. If he doesn't trip and stumble on his own, that's no call. But uh, a lot of wows tonight. Sent in far side, shot with the left hand, drops there for Stecco. Stecco now with nine tonight. 49-47, the Mustang lead down to two. 5.17 left here in the fourth as the Mustangs work right to left as we described. Keandre in front of the Laurel Highlands bench. Back to Dejai Hooper up top. Hooper in the corner to Brandon Davis. Davis long, too, too strong. And underneath, Bolinski rips down the rebound for Norwin. They're looking to run. Far side, Fleming drives. Big block, Gallagher. Into the hands of Davis, who had it poked away. Fleming from his back. Keeps it alive, Bolinski underneath. No foul called. A shot no good, and Davis finds the loose ball there for Laurel Highlands. Mike. Davis back over to Keandre. In the corner to Gallagher. He'll drive the far baseline. Pull out, Pratt. Up top, Hooper. Three on the way at the back iron. No good. Battle for the rebound. A lot of contact. No fouls getting called on Bolinski. Out of the pack with it there for the Knights. Forward to Edwards, touch back off it's to Bolinski on the Gotta give and go. Travel. It's a travel. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, help him out a little bit. How surprised were you, Steve? We didn't have any whistles during that whole sequence. Well, that I mean, Coach May is livid. Right, I think he's at to the point now where he's just going to quit complaining to him because it's not helping. Full timeout, 434 left here on the fourth, 49-47. Laurel Highlands are back at 60 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Keep your legal needs close to home. Attorney Vincent T. Berry specializes in criminal justice, wills and estates, family law, and personal injury. Attorney T. Berry is located at 84 East Main Street across the street from the Fayette County Courthouse in Uniontown. When you need to consult an attorney, make your first call to Attorney Vince T. Berry. It will be the only call you need to make. Call 724-430-0300. That's 724-430-0300. Simply Sweet, a party boutique. Located at 21 North Basin Avenue is the sweetest little boutique in the area. Simply Sweet is filled with Valentine's Day party decor, paper goods, and gifts for your favorite Valentine, Galentine, or Sweet Little Time. Surprise someone special this Valentine's Day or any time with one balloon or a bunch from Simply Sweet's Balloon Bar. Simply call 724-317-4929. Simply Sweet Boutique also specializes in balloon decor, event rentals, and event planning. Laurel Highlands getting tested tonight. Mustangs only leading by two, 49 to 47, 434 left in regulation. On the timeout front, Knights with two remaining, Mustangs with four remaining, and Laurel Highlands will have the basketball. Rodney Gallagher will trigger it in, and the Knights will send everybody back. No pressure on the inbounds. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to, and now you got Chambers back in for Hooper, so you got. Pretty much the guys you probably want in there at crunch time. Chambers back to Brandon Davis. Now over to Keandre, open look for three. Out the front of the rim, no good. Gallagher came crashing in, tipped it over to Pratt, couldn't finish out in front. Pratt trying to get it back. 
and a whistle should be a foul here on Norwin. Well, that's a, you know, that's you don't mind that shot from uh, the Shields. I mean, he can hit that shot on a regular basis, and G Gallagher had a chance to tip it in, and and and, and Pratt just too wide open and just kind of short armed it. That was the fourth personal foul on Ty Stecco. So big foul on the night side. Mustang stay with it. Gallagher over to Joe Chambers, back to Rod, coming baseline, far side, floats it over to Keandre. Keandre back on the inside, hit the deck. They're going to call a foul on the floor. That shot will not count. Wow. On the floor? On Stecco, and he's done. Stecco will foul out with nine points here at the 358 mark of the fourth. So he picked up two quick ones there, Steve. Yep. Team foul number six. So the Mustangs will shoot the one and one on the next foul. And it was odd, Steve, because that kind of occurred away from the ball. Yeah. And the Knights will check in number 10, Trent Raspotnik. And so Raspotnik. Coach, uh, Coach May was talking to him for a while. I don't know if he's going to have him do something. You know, he might be the guy that's going to create the fouls if they need to put the Mustangs on the line. Second time he's been in the game tonight. Here's Keandre. Nice no-look pass down low. Gallagher got fouled going up. And Rod will have two free throws upcoming. That one will go on Michael Fleming, I believe. Oops, that's on Beliski. <laughs> <That's, laughs> we can't call him tonight. That's the fourth on Belinsky. That's a huge yeah. foul from Coach and May. I want that on Coach Fleming. May. Coach May is just like shaking his head over there. They like what? What is going on? Gallagher makes the first of two free throws. Gives him 21 points for the game. Can't say that I blame him. It's Mustang just... lead back up to three at 50 to 47. Gallagher second of two free throws on the way and good. So 22 for Rodney Gallagher. The Mustang lead back up to four, 51 to 47. 350 left here in the fourth. Adam Belinsky playing it with Fleming. Touch from Weaver. Back to Belinsky. Long, too far wing. Off the back iron, no good. Jaden Pratt, the rebound there for the Mustangs. Off and across to Gallagher. Gallagher on the inside. Floats it up and in, Rodney Gallagher. Gallagher, five here in the fourth, 24 for the game. Mustang lead extended to six at 53 to 47 with 326 to play. Good test, though, tonight for Laurel Highlands. This Knights team playing hard. Fleming up top. Fleming staying with it. Shot with the left hand. No good foul call, though, on Laurel Highlands. It's on Chambers. Just his second. Now Jacob Murray will check in on the Norwin side. Murray, a six-foot junior guard. And Michael Fleming, who was one of two from the foul line in this game, will shoot two here for Norwin. First of two, no good. Comes number 23, Jacob Murray. Murray comes in for Raspotnik. Both bench players for the Knights. Of course, Ty Stecco fouled out at the 358 mark of the fourth after scoring nine. Second of two free throws again, no good from Michael Fleming. Mustangs with a rebound. Gallagher across on the far side. Launches the high arcing three and connects. Rodney Gallagher with eight here in the fourth. And 27 for the game. Hitting some big shots here in the fourth quarter, Steve. And the Mustang lead just like that up to nine. Fleming looking for an answer back. His high arcing three out the front of the rim. No good. And Keandre the rebound in traffic. Off to Davis and across. Davis running back. Wow, collision down low. And a blocking foul called there on Fleming. Yeah, that had to be because he was moving. He kind of slid into Davis. It's only his first. And Davis slow in getting up. That's not good news for Laurel Highlands. Davis trying to stay with it right now, holding on to his left knee. They're going to wipe some moisture off the court. 2.51 left in regulation, 56-47 Mustangs. And Brandon Davis is going to attempt to stay in the game to shoot two free throws. He's four of six from the foul line so far in this game. So it's kind of like a goalie get, checking his equipment in hockey to get a little extra time. And uh, You have four timeouts remaining if you're Laurel Highlands. Might be wise maybe just to take one here and just make sure 
You're five on the quarter, okay, and Coach Hogg agrees with me. Full timeout, 2.51 left here in the fourth, 56-47. We're back at 60 here on the CR Brada Group High School Sports Night. Go to Ford Union Town and trade me in. Hello, this is John Clinton, and I want to share with you just how easy it is to purchase an incoming vehicle here at Ford Union Town. When you arrive, we'll show you all the inbound inventory that we have coming. We'll go over all the packages and equipment, then we'll appraise your current vehicle and put together an offer just for you. When you accept the offer, we tag that vehicle sold and call you when it arrives. It's just that simple. Of course, we'll go over all the purchase and lease incentives to make sure no details are overlooked. Nothing inbound catch your eye and you have a bit more time? We'll be happy to place a factory order special for you. Have you heard about these historic trade values? It's all true and you don't want to miss out. Are you thinking more pre-owned? We have over 100 Ford and non-Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs are ready to move. I have a special thank you for our recent customers that helped us raise $5,000 for the Fayette Friends of Animals and $4,000 for the Fayette County Food Bank. Your car knows, shouldn't you? Top of the hill across from Applebee's or FordofUniontown.com. Prime Rosek, Steve Superk back here at Laurel Highland Science School, and Brandon Davis is going to remain in the game here for the Mustangs. He's really checking his P's and Q's, Steve, before the timeout. Looks a little bit better now than he did yep. before that timeout was whistled by Coach Hogger. This will be a one and one, makes the front end. To seven points tonight for Brandon Davis after he scored 29 on Wednesday. Came in averaging 18.3 a game. Lead now at 10 for the Mustangs. They're on an 8-0 run. Second of two free throws. No good there for Brandon Davis. Norwin the rebound, but they have some ground now to make up with 2.45 to play down 10. Fleming with it right now. Fronted by Chambers. Send it around. Edwards a touch. Far side Weaver. And what do we got here? A push call on Laurel Highlands. Where are they getting for that one? Davis. His fourth. This will be a one and one for Adam Bolinski. Bolinski two of three from the foul line in this game. Knights down ten. Front end of a one and one here. Good for Adam Bolinski. That'll give him 14 points for the game. Knights back to within nine at 57 to 48. Bolinski, 6'3", junior guard, came in averaging 16 points a game, second of two. On the way, and good again for Adam Bolinski. Uh, they're going to full court pressure. Haven't seen much of that from the Knights tonight. They're down eight, trying to force a Mustang turnover. Laurel Highlands breaks it. Now they'll pull it back high on the left here to Rodney Gallagher. Might see a lot of free throw shooting late. Another whistle and a foul called here on Norwin. It'll be another one and one. Team foul number nine. So on the next foul, Laurel Highlands will shoot two the rest of the way. You mentioned earlier, Steve, how solid the Laurel Highlands free throw shooting has been this year, but you haven't had a close game in the fourth quarter to really evaluate the free throw shooting. Well, it gets a little tighter when it's a close game in the fourth quarter. Raspotnik now back into the game, replacing Jacob Murray on the Norwin side. Lead at 8, 226 to play. One and one here for Rodney Gallagher. Front end on the way in good. So Gallagher now, eight points here in the fourth quarter, 28 for the game. Leading the way for the Mustangs, one of his higher point outputs of the season. Second of two for Gallagher, good again. So a 29-point game for Rodney Gallagher. And the lead at 10 at 59-49 to with 2.23 left here in the fourth. Michael Fleming back across. Fleming a little juggle out of bounds back over to Laurel Highlands. Couldn't rule that one off of the Mustangs and out, Steve. Fleming just lost it. Now Chambers will trigger it back in. Again, a full court pressured look here out of the Knights and a push call in the backcourt. And Coach Meha in the face of Scott Levander. He might pick up a technical. Oh, look, he calls it on 14. That should have been on Belinsky. But it was on uh, Weaver. And he was in Scott's face big time, Steve. Yeah. The way Scott came over, I thought Lance was going to get teed up. Well, I think he's probably wanting to get teed up now. This is getting a little bit out of reach, and I think he's going to send a message. Yes. That was the fourth personal on Justin Weaver 
Two shots now for Brandon Davis, and he connects on the first of two. Davis was 4-4 four four at the foul line in the second quarter, but here in the fourth, just 2 of 5. Second of two on the way, and good again for Brandon Davis. So nine tonight for Davis. Lead at 61-49 with 2.13 left here in the fourth. Ryan Edwards back across. Edwards here on the near wing. A little poke from Davis, but it was saved there by Weaver. Sent in the corner. Fleming missed on the three. Belinsky offensive rebound scores on the putback. Adam Belinsky now with 17. Knights pressure again. They're down 10 as we go under two minutes left in regulation. Gallagher floats it across. Far side, Keandre, and he gets fouled by Rasputnik. Good job by Keandre. He had Pratt streaking in and decided just, just to hold it out there and dribble around. And he knows now it's the clock is your friend. You want it to keep moving. It's the first on Rasputnik. He only played a couple of minutes tonight. Keandre, first of two free throws, no good. Keandre, 13 points tonight. That was his first free throw attempt. A little chink in the armor here in the four, fourth quarter for the Mustangs of the foul line. Second of two, good for Keandre DeShields. Gives him 14 for the game. 62-51, an 11-point lead for Laurel Highlands with 1.45 to play. Fleming coming far baseline for the Knights and a rejection from Jaden Pratt. Got deflected back. Norwin keeps possession. Belinsky a touch back in the corner. Fleming high arcing three. Good. Michael Fleming and a quick timeout from the Knights. Fleming now with 11. Norwin back after that made three. Steve to within eight at 62-54. to 133 to play, and we're back in 60 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Going on now at Steve Harper Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $2.79 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. 4,500 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Payment is for tax title fees and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends January 31st, 2022. While supplies last. Residency restrictions apply. Call viewer for all the details at 724 8000 Casey Sports Cafe, owned by the Vernon family, is located on South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Casey's has reopened for dining services with new hours Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Meals are home cooked and arranged from a variety of steaks, chicken and veal parmesan, liver and onions, along with appetizers, salads, wings, and sandwiches. Casey's offers free delivery in the Uniontown area with purchases of $10 or more. Phone 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Cafe. Laurel Highlands leading Norwin 62-54. A win tonight for Uniontown, 56-41. Solid fourth quarter for Rob Kesmarski's squad as they down Yach at Cougar Mountain. It'll be Joey Chambers to send it in. Here for the Mustangs, and a home run ball down the court over to Rodney Gallagher, and Gallagher lays it up and in. Rodney Gallagher now with 31 tonight. And the Mustang lead at 10 at 64 to 54. 122 to play. Underneath, a little ball fake. Edwards stays with it. Just put it off the side of the glass. Deflected over to Brandon Davis. Davis has it high on the right, and he's fouled. Is that the knockout blow tonight, Steve? Not yet. I wouldn't say anything yet. The Davis back to the line, but what a game for Rodney Gallagher and with Brandon Davis a little a little dinged up tonight, Steve. Keandre got in early foul trouble. It's been Gallagher leading the way in the scoring department. Another missed free throw of the line for Brandon Davis. With a win, Laurel Islands would improve to 13-0 on the season. Norwin entered this game 4-7. Second of two free throws, good for Brandon Davis. So Davis now in double figures with 10, lead at 65 to 54. 111 left here in regulation. Belinsky up top, sends it off to his left to Ryan Edwards. Little ball fake with Davis on him, back to Belinsky, kicked in the corner, and that three attempt, I thought it was blocked by Gallagher on Weaver, and they're gonna call Rod for the foul. And Coach uh, Hogger doesn't like it. Gallagher didn't like it. It's only his first foul, but that's a three-shot foul. 
If there was contact, there wasn't much. Now Weaver heads to the line for Norwin. First free throw no good for Justin Weaver. Weaver now two of three from the free throw line. He scored four points. A minute even left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. The Laurel Highlands lead at 11. Weaver second of three on the way to get no good. So the Mustangs catch a break there. A couple of fourth quarter free throw misses from Justin Weaver. And the Knights just two of six of the foul line here in the fourth. Third of three on the way and good this time for Justin Weaver. Weaver with five tonight. Quick Whoa, steal off the inbounds pass. And laying it up and in Ryan Edwards. So Edwards with 15. They pressure the ball again. And a quick foul. That cuts the lead down to eight. And 65 to 57. That's Ryan Edwards on the foul. They need to correct the scoreboard right now. Should be 65 to 57. With 54 seconds left. Now they got it up there. And you'll have Keandre on the other side shooting two. Again, Norwin over the limit. Mustangs in the double bonus the rest of the way. Now, last foul was posted on Justin Weaver. It should be his fifth, and it is. So Weaver will foul out the second night over the limit. Fouls out with 54 seconds left here in the fourth quarter after scoring five points. Ty Stecco fouled out at the 358 mark of the fourth. Now you'll have Trent Raspotnik back into the game on the Norwin side. And DeAndre to Shields at the free throw line here for Laurel Highlands. DeAndre scored 14 tonight, just one of two at the foul line, makes his first of two here. Again, DeAndre came in 74% for the season from the free throw line, 29 of 39. Was averaging close to 23 points, eight rebounds, three assists, and two steals per game. Second of two here, rattles in for Keandre to Shields to give him 16 for the game. Knights now should be down 10. They are at 67 to 57. Back to Edwards, quick three on the wing, short off the front of the rim, gets his own rebound, fights back inside and gets fouled by Keandre. And that should be Keandre's fourth, at least could, we could anticipate on, it being on, on Keandre. Gallagher. It is on Gallagher. Yeah, he reached in too. I thought Keandre got him up top. Just the second on Rodney. And Ryan Edwards will head to the line. He's two of two from the free throw line in this game. Mustang lead at 10, 43 seconds left in regulation. And Coach Hogger giving it to Scott Lavander. Let a, he's getting an ear feel from both coaches yes. tonight. I think Scott's took the brunt of yeah. a lot of the abuse yeah. from the uh, uh, ref or from the uh, coaches tonight. As Edwards makes the first of two free throws. Second of two free throws from Edwards. This one good again. Edwards with 17. Knights back to within eight down, 67-59. Another quick foul here in front of the Norwin bench. That might be it for Adam Belinsky. It, it is, is on Adam Belinsky. So he's the third knight to foul out, and that one hurts, Steve. Came in averaging 16 points and nine rebounds a game. He fouls out with 40.6 left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. It looked like early on the Mustangs were the team more in foul trouble than Norwin, and here we are in the final minute of the fourth quarter, and three Knights have fouled out, and now Jacob Murray back into the game on the Norwin side. And you'll have Brandon Davis back at the free throw line here for Laurel Highlands. Davis, first of two, no good. Davis, four of nine from the foul line here in the fourth quarter. Second of two. This one good for Brandon Davis. 11 points for Davis. Lead at 68 to 59. 36 seconds left. And a quick steal. It's Davis on it. Davis coming back. We'll just lay it up and in. So Davis adds another two to his point total. Mustangs pressure the basketball. They're up 11 at 70 to 59. And they force another turnover. Here's Gallagher coming back. Rod will send it out to Brandon Davis. The Mustangs just might kill the clock here. Yep, they're going to kill it. Davis holds high on the right. 
It was a battle tonight for Laurel Highlands. Credit Norwin. They played a great game. Took the Mustangs deep into this fourth quarter. And Norwin kind of ran out of ammunition. With three players fouling out here in the fourth. And Laurel Highlands escapes here at home with a 70-59 win over the Norwin Knights to improve to 13-0 on the season. The loss drops Norwin to 4-8. And, and we're back to tell you all about it on our postgame show brought to you by First Federal Savings Loan Association of Greene County here on WMBS, the Trib Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. Where can you go these days and have your gas pump for you? Oil checked and windshield clean. Joby's Golf. That's where Joby's Golf is conveniently located at the corner of Fayette and Beeson Boulevard. Joby's Golf is a fast, friendly, full-service gas station serving the Uniontown area and the same location for over 47 years. Joby's Golf offers walkout services, general repairs, tire repair, fenced-in storage lots, state inspection, golf products, and AAA 24-hour car and light truck towing service. Call 724-438-0681. When you are looking to make some extra cash for your aluminum cans, visit Cherokee Recycling, where aluminum can is king. Cherokee Recycling is open Monday through Friday, 9 till 5, and Saturdays, 8 till 12 noon, closed Sundays and holidays. Give Marcus or Rags a call today at 724-439-3228 for Cherokee Recycling, where recycling makes the most sense. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all Are you looking for a rewarding career? m and Transit is now hiring van drivers. Van drivers must be 26 years of age, have a valid driver license, and a clean driving record. Van drivers must be able to obtain all clearances. For more information, call 724-439-3164. That's 724-439-3164 or apply in person at m and Transit. 253 South Mount Vernon Avenue. Amandar Transit wishes the Laurel Highlands Mustangs good luck. Going on now at Steve Harper Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $279 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SteveHarperChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. With 4,500 cash trade equity with lease loyalty or lease complex payment. It's for cash title fees and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends January 31st, 2022. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 and Hopwood are proud supporters of local high school sports. For more information on the programs that the Catholic War Veterans provide, log on to the Catholic War Veterans website at www.cwv.org. You can also visit the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 on Facebook or phone 724-437-3088. That's 724-437-3088 for the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. I'm attorney Bill Martin, partner at Radcliffe Law. If you're injured in an accident and can't agree with the insurance company on a settlement, you may have to go to trial. You'll need an attorney that's familiar with the process. As an assistant district attorney, I'm comfortable in the courtroom and have experience that not all attorneys do. Call me or Trip Radcliffe today and set up your free consultation for any personal injury case. 724-439-3939. We're easily accessible in Uniontown and provide Saturday appointments. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare. Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Prime Rosak, Steve Superk back here on our post-game show. Brought to you by First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Laura Highlands Mustangs, a 70-59 win over the Norwin Knights. Steve, is your final stats. They're brought to you by Peachin's Pharmacy, located inside the downtown Connellsville Peachin Market. Okay, for the Knights, uh, Belinsky finishes with 17 points, Edwards with 17, Fleming with 11, Weaver 5, and Stecco with 9. 
They had 10 in the first, 11 in the second, 22 in the third, 16 in the fourth, 59 for the ball game. For the Mustangs, the Shields finishes with 16 points. Gallagher leads the way with 31. Davis with 13. Pratt with 8. And Chambers with 2. They scored 14 in the first, 19 in the second, just 11 in the third, but 26 in the fourth for a 70-59 to 59 victory. Steve, what do you like for Davis and Davis, players of the game? Well, you got to go with Gallagher for the Mustangs for sure. And then it, uh, with uh, the Knights, it's either going to be Belinsky or Edwards, depending on who. It's a toss-up there. So I'll go with, I'll go with uh, uh, Belinsky for, for the Knights. You really have to credit Norwin for playing tough tonight. And you wonder, Laurel Highlands obviously played a pretty emotional game on Wednesday against Bell Vernon as well. And you didn't know what to expect tonight, but the Mustangs did what they had to do and came through here in the fourth quarter after only leading by one after three at 44-43. to 43. Yeah. yeah, it was a heck of a game. And you got to give the Knights credit. And the story of the night is going to go down as probably the officials, both coaches not happy with uh, any of them probably. And uh, just a lot of curious calls, a lot of odd, odd, odd calls really, to be honest with you. And it's just, uh, it was just an odd, uh, odd game from that standpoint. But the uh, Mustangs still better, the better team that came up on top. They got tested, and they pulled off with a big fourth quarter. They outscored the Knights 26 to 16 in the fourth quarter after starting the quarter being only up by one. So give the Mustangs credit for hanging in there. Uh, they didn't play their best tonight. It was sloppy at times. Uh, they didn't shoot well. They didn't shoot, make free throws when they needed to in the stretch there. Uh, they had a little troubles there. Uh, but they, at the end of the day, they get the victory, which is really all that matters. Now wrap it up for you folks on the video side. Again, we're back Monday. Laura Highlands hosting West Mifflin. 7 o'clock, Browns Insurance Group pregame show, 7.30. Opening tip-off. We're back with one final segment on the radio side right after this. Again, your final score, Laurel Highlands 70 and Norwin 59.